Well, I turned 65 on Sunday. And so uh, um, my wife uh, likes the idea of the bucket list. Remember that movie, The Bucket List? And so uh, we're, we're just starting what I hope will be a very long bucket list Absolutely. over a long period of time. Um, but the first thing on Joy's bucket list was to go to an Elton John concert. And Elton is coming to Calgary on May 13th. And we're at a wedding in uh, Vancouver, B.C. So we can't go to there. And so she was surfing the, the web and found this, uh, this uh, concert down here tomorrow night. So we're going to Elton John tomorrow night. So that's, that's uh, the first check on our bucket list. Actually, the truth is he's coming to see us. And then since he's here, he might as well see Elton John. But, uh, <laughs> so maybe we made the difference for Elton John. <laughs> why, why didn't I think of that? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Jim, he, he's an amazing guy. He's, uh, you've been a medical doctor for about 35 years, I understand. Uh, Round, roundabout. And also clinical psychologist? A psychotherapist. Psychotherapist. Yeah. Oh. And yeah. made, made a difference in a lot of people's lives, uh, worked hard. Yeah. And then you bumped into Nikan, and I, I hope that'll be the main thrust of your story, but also just some perspective medically with Nikan and just tell your story. But he, he's an amazing guy. I, one of the CDs I like to listen to a lot is, is Jim Buse. Uh, you're a good man, and I appreciate you coming and speaking for us. So. Thanks, Dave. Thank you very much. Happy You're to awesome. be here. Happy yeah. to be here, man. <laughs> well, uh, I'm Dr. Jim Buse. I'm from Calgary, Alberta. I've actually been a physician now for 41 years. And uh, for 25 of those years, I was an assistant professor at the University of Calgary uh, teaching medicine. And um, how did I get into NECAN? Oh, listen, I want this to be kind of informal and I want this to be fun, and I want it to be uh, the best meeting that you've ever been to. How does that sound? <laughs> now there's a catch. If this was going to be the best meeting you've ever been to, what would you guys have to do? You, yeah, you'd have to participate, you know, appropriately. And whenever something comes up, um, I'm going to be telling you some stuff, but the stuff I'm going to tell you is the stuff that I know the best. It may not be the best, but it's what I know the best. So if you agree with me, just nod enthusiastically. <laughs> and if you don't, just blink your eyes. <laughs> and come up and talk to me about it later, okay? So um, I'd been a doctor for about 25 years. And I remember coming home and at the kitchen table, uh, Joy and I were having dinner. I said, honey... I looked after people like us, and I said, honey, I'm having my prescription pads pre-printed for painkillers and anti-inflammatories, and I'm looking after our friends, and um, I'm helping them, and I'm killing them at the same time with the side effects. Do you know what I'm talking about? And I said, there's got to be something else that will help people, and I'm going to find it. And I started to study. And I studied, I mean, I'm a student as well as a teacher. And, and uh, I'm a diligent student. And I studied for four and a half years. And I never actually found anything that I could put my mind behind. And if I couldn't put my mind behind it, I wasn't going to put my heart behind it. If I couldn't put my heart behind it, I wasn't going to introduce it to my patients. Make sense? Yeah. Right? I really loved what I was doing. And so um, then a strange thing happened. My father had had a stroke in 1989. He was 76. And for the next 10 years, he suffered with agony in his right wrist. And as doctors, we don't know why people have that post-stroke discomfort. You know? And I can remember my dad was a great big football player type guy. And I can remember him sitting on the edge of the bed. And he'd say, he'd just sit there like that and he'd say, Jim, isn't there anything you can do for me? And I'd, my heart would melt and... And I'd say, Dad, I'm your son, not your doctor. And I, I really don't know what else to do for you. And then in about um, 1999, Mom was developing Alzheimer's that we could recognize. She had gone to the bank, which was just two blocks away from her house, and it took her eight hours to get home. And she was driving around and around and around, couldn't find her house. And fortunately, a neighbor 
saw her driving around and went out and stopped the car. This is in downtown Toronto, you know, big city, a lot of bad things could have happened, right? And he said, lady, show me your license. And so he said, Mrs. Buse, you live right over there. And so he took her over to her garage and, and uh, dad phoned us and very quickly we arranged to have mom and dad go into a retirement home up in Ottawa where my sister lived at the time. And when he got up there, he got a new set of doctors, right? Now, my dad was a nice guy. If you'd have met him, you'd have liked him. And his doctors liked him, too. And so they said, Mal, you're 86 years old. You're in agony. You're on morphine. We really don't have much more to offer than what you're on already. So, but here's what we can do. Somebody got a pen? Can I borrow your pen? We can, we can take a syringe, and we can fill it up with a poison, and we can inject it into your spinal cord, and we can selectively kill the nerves to your right arm, and you'll be pain-free. You're 86. I mean, how long can you live? And so my, thanks. So my sister, thinking this wasn't a good idea, went to her next-door neighbor who worked for a company called Nikan. I'd never heard of them, and said, do you have anything from your Japanese healthcare company that would help my dad? And the woman, quite rightly, said, I don't know. Why don't you try this little hand wrap? It goes from about the middle of your hand to about two inches past your wrist. It sure has helped a lot of other people. And so my sister took that hand wrap into my dad. It was September 19th, uh, 1999, and uh, put it on his wrist. And after 10 years of agony, unrelieved by anti-inflammatories and morphine several times a day, his pain was gone in 30 minutes. Isn't that an amazing story? Well, now that's the first part of the story. So my dad picked up the phone and he said, um, now, <laughs> I need you to know that my dad and I have a very loving relationship. And, but he said, good morning, son. And I said, you know, it was unusual. It was a Saturday morning. I, I said, good morning, dad. He said, uh, let's get this straight. You're a doctor, right? <laughs> and I said, where's this going, dad? And he said, and your sister, she's a housewife. <laughs> He said, she just took my pain away. You've done nothing for me for 10 years. <laughs> she just took my pain away in 30 minutes. I went, now I know my sister likes to watch uh, health shows on TV, right? General Hospital and whatnot. <laughs> but she's, <laughs> she's a little short of my experience level. So I said, Dad, how did she do that? He said, magnets. I went, oh, Dad. Oh, Dad, how much did you pay for it? Because he was 86. I thought he'd been scammed. He said, I don't know, 60 bucks. He said, my pain is gone. I'd really like you to look into this. Are you with me? So, uh, you know, I love my dad, and, and uh, I said I'd look into it. And I remembered that two of my patients, a year before, when they were getting their physical, had come in, and I said, you know, I like to, I'm interested in people. And I said, you know, what, what's, what's exciting in your life? And they said... What I heard them say was, they were selling magnetic beds, you know? And I had this vision of these beds that would vibrate or something. And I had my stethoscope in my ears, and I was listening to his wife's chest. They always came in together for some reason. And I was listening to his ch her chest, and I, I said, I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. <laughs> you know, my waiting room is full. I'm behind anyway. So I let it go, but I remembered who they were, and I phoned them up, and I went out to their place, and they showed me all the products. Now, the first thing they did was a strength test on, on me. And I couldn't... Have every one of you had a strength test? Have you all had a strength test? So you know that it's pretty amazing the difference it takes. How long does it take that difference to occur when you're standing on mag steps? You're, it's immediate, right? So here I am assistant clinical professor at the university, and they're knocking me off my feet one minute, and the next minute, they can't budge me. How does that work? I don't know. So they said, did I want to join and buy everything? And I said, <laughs> <laughs> and I said, no. And then they did a great thing. They took me out to a horse clinic. Um, they brought a couple of horses up from Spruce Meadows. I have horses. And, uh, you know, if horses have a sore back, you can go down their back just like this, and they'll just flinch away from you. So they brought these two thoroughbreds out and hunter jumpers, and 
and uh, uh, they went down their backs, and those horses flinched away, and uh, so uh, they uh, uh, threw a horse blanket. Nikon used to have horse blankets at that time over the back with two rows of magnets down either side, two down the hips and two down the shoulders. And then they just took that horse and they stood it in the back of the arena. And they brought the second horse out and the second horse had the same back affliction. Now these were horses, these were elite athletes, right? Used to going over jumps and this knee can distributor's job was to get those horses back into shape and get rid of their pain. So the other horse had the same thing. I can't remember what, they, what product they used on the other horse, but after they sent them off and they then called people up from the audience to do the strength test and to talk about the other products. And about 25 minutes or 30 minutes later, they brought those horses back. And they called this great big guy out of the audience, Baron Carl, and, uh, and a great big farmer with ham hands, and they said, give it to him. And the guy went, give it to him? And they said, yeah, give it to him. And he drove down those horses' backs. And not a flinch. And the horses were standing with their ears akimbo and, you know, mouth on their lips. They were perfectly relaxed. And I went, oh my goodness, there's no placebo effect in animals, right? Why is there a placebo effect in humans? We want to get better. <laughs> well, all animals want to get better. All children under the age of 10 want to get better, right? But in some adults, right, it's up here. So, um, um, then the next thing they did was they put me in touch with a doctor on Vancouver Island who was using these products. And I said, well, what do you sell? And he said, I sell those shoe things. And he said, at that time we had a little uh, TENS unit. And he said, I can't keep those on the shelf because they help so many people. Now that product is gone, but uh, there are other products that we use for, for, with similar effects on these folks. So I thought, hmm. I went and I borrowed a pair of these mag steps and I took them out to Joy's brother. Now, you have to know that, oops, can I take these off here? Okay. Now, you have to know that I'm married to a scientist. And she didn't believe this and she loves her brother and she said, don't you be taking those things out there. Marvin spent thousands of dollars trying to get rid of his hip pain because he had been born with a congenital abnormality in his hip. His hip, he had leg perthes disease. And his hip, instead of being round, and turning properly was twisted and gnarled. And, it was going, and, and I was sending him anti-inflammatories for my sample cupboard in my office, because why should he pay for them? And so I knew he was taking anti-inflammatories, bunches of them, every single day. So I never told Joy at this point, she's forgiven me since, I slipped a pair of these into my uh, suitcase and I took them out and on Saturday morning I went over to her brother's house. Her, Joy's mom lives in the country and and uh, Marvin lived across the street in the country. And I went over and I said, Marvin, what have we got to lose? These things, at that time, they were, in, I said, these are 90 bucks retail. I said, let's, I did the strength test on him and he went, wow. Down came my, my a ne a nephews and I did the strength test on them and they went, wow. <laughs> you know, kids are so much, they said, Uncle Jim, you're the best, <laughs> you know. And I said, Marvin, let's trim these up and put them in your shoes. What have we got to lose? And so we did that, and then we went away, and we got on with our chores for that day. So we got together at dinner time that night, and I said, Marvin, how's your hip? And he went, oh, I forgot to take my pills today. He said, my hip is good. Well, I kind of backed away from him, and he kind of backed away from me, because he's, a, he's a, an engineer, an engineering technician, an academic engineering technician, even worse. And, but he didn't care, you see, because his pain was gone. And the next day, we got together at dinner. I said, Marvin, how's your pain? And he said, Jim, he said, I don't have any pain. And I haven't taken any pills again today. But you've got to hear what happened. I left something on the bed upstairs. And I ran up the stairs two at a time. And when I got to the top, I looked back down because I can't do that. <laughs> the next day, we got together. And he sa I said, uh, I was walking home from a a walk that we'd gone on when Joy was walking ahead with her brother Marvin and I was walking with his wife Iris and she said, Jim, you're not getting those shoe things back. <laughs> she said, he's walking almost without a limp and I'm going, I know. So Marvin and I got together at the airport and I said, Marvin, it's going to wear off. I mean, you want to get better, that's why it's working. And he said, I know that. He said, phone me tomorrow. He said, I'm going up to the Okanagan. It's a five-hour drive. He said, I can't get out of the car. 
uh, when I get to that university up there. And uh, I phoned him that night, and uh, he had no pain. He said, phone me tomorrow, I'm in a board meeting. He said, they bring meals into us, we never leave. He said, I can't walk when I get out of that meeting. I phoned him, he said, Jim, I'm fine. I phoned him every night for 13 weeks. My, sis my sister-in-law was getting kind of annoyed with me. <laughs> On the 14th day, I said, uh, Iris, can I speak to Marv? She said, no, he's playing out in the backyard. She said, I don't see him do that. And she started to cry. And she said, Jim, she said, Marv hasn't been in bed with me past about 4.30 in the morning for 10 years because his pain hurts him so bad in his hip, he's got to get up and move it around. She said, since you left, he hasn't taken one pill. He hasn't had any discomfort. And he's lying right beside me when I wake up at 6.30 in the morning. She said, we were in church last week, and someone came up to us and said, Marvin, I don't know what the doctors have you on now, but it's sure better than the last stuff, because all the pain has left your face. Wow. Isn't that a great story? Yeah. So I took uh, uh, that information, and I said, um, oh, <laughs> Then we have one other cute thing happen with Joy. Um, I have, uh, I'm a long distance runner, but I'm kind of bow-legged. So I guess my takeoff is wrong. And I, and I got osteoarthritis in, in my right big toe. And I went, boy, well, what am I going to do? I really like to be an active guy. So I went out and I had orthotics made, and it rolled me off that joint. And, but, and that worked. Worked for about a year and a half. And then my other joints were taking more uh, of the weight than they should be, and they started to hurt. And I'm going, wow, I'm in trouble here. And uh, so my wife said to me, she said, Jim, let's go for a walk. And I said, okay. She said, take your orthotics out. We live in the country. I said, Joy, I can't get to the, the mailbox without my orthotics. You know that. She said, put those things in your shoes. They work for your dad, they work for my arm, and they'll work for you too. She knew they wouldn't, right? By the time we got to the end of the driveway, honey, I don't know if you've ever heard me tell that story. <laughs> By the time we got to the end of the driveway, I realized I'd taken my orthotics out and I was placing my foot flat on the ground and there was no pain there. We walked eight kilometers that day and I wasn't able to do that before that, especially without those orthotics in my shoes. And I came back out of my truck, went around to find it because I was amazed at how far I could walk. And... Now we have three cases right in a row that worked instantly on each of us. My dad, my brother-in-law, and me. We thought they'd work on everybody instantly, and they don't. But it does about 50% of the time. And another 25% of the people may take five or six or seven days to, before they perceive that it's working. Now it's working right from the get-go. It has to, because your electrons are no different than my electrons. You apply a magnetic force to it, we know what it does. Right? But just like some people have a different pain tolerance, some people have a different perception of when this starts working for them. And about 24% of people might take up to a month. And you know, some people might not perceive the difference for two, three months. So we encourage people uh, to keep using these things. So what I did next was I bought 40 pairs of these shoe things. Right? I joined up, bought 40 pairs of these things, and I started to introduce them into my practice for people mostly with foot and ankle problems or knee problems or, or hip problems. And, you know, every time I gave those to a person, they were getting better. And, wow, it didn't seem to matter what I was giving them to. I was getting great results with everybody. I got a lot of stories I could tell you. Um, so we're going to talk for a while here because I've got a few things that I want to say to you. But we're going to finish up with a question and answer period. And I understand people are e even going to email in their questions, and we'll, we'll do that uh, sort of for the last half hour of this uh, presentation. But at any rate, um, I started to, oh, the next thing that happened was um, a guy named William Pollock came up from New Jersey, and William Pollock was a doctor, and he was the president of the North American Magnetic Medical Association. Did you know that existed? I didn't either. But he came up, and it was a group of doctors, just like me, who were looking for some other way to help their patients other than drugs. All right? It's not that we're against drugs. I'll bet you, put your hand up if you've had your life saved by uh, drugs in this room. Saved by a drug in this room. If you, not in this room, but... 
If you've had your life saved by a drug, did you? Has anyone ever had a strep throat? Did Did you get penicillin for that? Do you know that used to kill people, right? So, or an appendix, you know, where people die from. So, you know, I'm not, we're not against modern medicine, but I just think there are some things that we're not taught in medical school, for sure, that I wish we had been taught in medical school. There are other things. We were taught to diagnose disorders and then to reach for a prescription pad and to write a prescription for them. So at any rate, after 25 years, I'd paled on that. So I was glad to hear there was this North American Magnetic Medical Issues. And I took about uh, 20 people over to that lecture. And I took 17 pages of notes. This guy was ADD. And he, he must have been. His energy was so high, he was over the moon about Nikan products. And when we left that meeting, Joyce said, there's so much science in this. You've got to get my sister-in-law on this. You've got to get the, the people in my bridge club on this. And wow, we were really impressed with the science that was behind these products. Now, we don't know how 70% of the drugs in medicine work. Is that frightening? Yeah. So, we know what they do from observation, but we don't know how they do it at the cell membrane. We know more about how magnets work at the cell membrane level than we do how most... We don't know how Viagra works, but it hasn't stopped the sales of Viagra, right? Okay, that was supposed to be a joke, you guys. <laughs> you gotta work with me. <laughs> Remember that was your part? You know, Joy and I have been on the road we thought it was going to take eight hours. Well, our first hour took three hours. We came in a nail-biting snowstorm, and uh, uh, we're traveling along at 20 kilometers an hour. That's about eight miles an hour for you guys. And uh, I thought, should I phone Dave and tell him we're not going to get there? And I said, we'll pull over here and you know hold up for a while and, and see if it clears, and it did. And I'm glad we came, because we, we certainly couldn't miss you guys, and we're certainly not going to miss Elton John either. <laughs> So, um, where was I? Well, just that these things worked. And um, um, then I started to learn about other things that you could use these for. And I remember a mom bringing, just, just towards the end of my office, she came in with her little daughter, and, and, uh, and uh, I listened to her chest, and I said, you know, your daughter's got a little wheezing in there. I said, you're a together mom. I said, you want to try something? And she said, Sure. And I said, I'm going to put this little magnet on a string around your daughter's neck. And it was a little leather thong, actually, so that if she caught it, it would break. And I said, here's the deal. Here's my card. Here's my home phone number. If your daughter gets into trouble tonight, you call me. I'll come right over to your house. I'll bring an inhaler with me. I said, but if you don't have a problem with that, with her breathing, I want you to be my first, my first patient's at 8.30. You be here at 8.15. She said, okay. I went home, I said, honey, you know what I did tonight? <laughs> I put a magnet on a kid for wheezing, right? I said, I may be going out tonight. She didn't call. 8.15 the next morning, she came in, I listened to her chest, I said, well, her breathing's clear, and she said, oh no, Jim. It was clear by the time we reached the car in the parking lot. Wow. Ooh. So I thought, little kid, little magnet. Big woman, big magnet. So I put the next one, I put one of those, what do they call those? Maxi discs in. And, we, and I put her in her bra. She didn't like that so much. She, she put it in her own bra. What am I saying? <laughs> At any rate, same thing happened. Then I started to use the necklace. Wow, was that great. I helped so many people in that year that um, it was really, really gratifying. And the, the patients, they loved it. One thing they didn't want to do was be on medications, right? I mean, no one likes to put stuff in their body that wasn't meant to be there, right? So then I retired from active medical practice. and. Um, I started to do retired things, which was nothing. That lasted about six weeks, and I realized that wasn't going to work. And, uh, and um, um, so I started to do knee on a very part-time basis. 
and I did that for about six years, and and uh, I got to the platinum level, and um, then Reed Nelson um, uh, asked me one day if I would consider doing this as a business instead of as a hobby, because he said if you would do this as a business with all the efficiencies of a business, you could help probably thousands of people instead of the dozens of people that you're helping now. And so uh, with his support and a lot of other support from a lot of other people, um, I'm now a diamond and uh, we have helped a lot of people over the years and it, it's been a great run. The support has been tremendous from the people above us. So, um, what do you want to know about? I'll tell you what happened to me at the very beginning was I wanted to investigate the company. The company now has been around for 36 years. I think they're in 38 or 39 countries now. They're opening other countries as they go. And, uh, and uh, uh, you know, you can't... And they, Every year they sell, you know, a billion and a half dollars worth of product. And they have no stores and no employees. Right? It's all word of mouth. One person telling another person uh, about this. Now, do, have any of you... Uh, so I knew the company was rock solid. They had a 5A1 Dun & Bradstreet rating, the highest rating any company can have. They were a cash-rich company. Um, I, everybody who was in Nikan just raved about the reliability of this company. And so, um, you know, I was prepared to believe them. I went out and I got every CD. No, they weren't CDs then. They were tapes and those VHS, VCR things. And I watched those. I remember my sponsor gave me a box and... And I would listen to those things on the way to work and on the way home from work. And, and uh, boy, I learned a lot about those things pretty darn quickly. As a matter of fact, one of, the, one of the tapes I listened to was Dave's, one of Dave's original tapes. And what I liked about Dave's tape is, of course, he's the funniest guy in the world. Um, but you wanted to know, you want to know, that was important to me. Because I didn't want to do something where I had to work harder and more seriously than I was working in my office now, I wanted to work at a job that was more fun and, and where you could have fun with the people that you were working with. That was another thing. I was a solo practitioner. I was used to working on my own uh, all the time. When, when I went away on holidays, and for the first five years, I didn't go away on holidays because, you know, you're young, you're building your practice. Uh, but when I did start to go away on holidays, I, I turned the key in that door. If I turned the key in that door, my income fell to zero, but my expenses didn't fall to zero because I still had to pay for my mortgage and I still had to pay for my office expenses and my lab and my, my uh, uh, nurse. Um, later on, I had other doctors come in and look after, um, look after uh, my practice for me, and so I had to pay them as well. Well, that doesn't happen with Niken. Um, a couple of years ago, Joy and I uh, are blessed to be involved with a third world charity where we give money, small amounts of money, between $100 and $300 to people, in, uh, to women, mostly to women in developing countries. And the charity is called Impact First International, and it's a wonderful thing. And with that 100 bucks that we'll give to somebody, uh, to a, a woman, she can start a business, because no one else will give her that money. And she has to pay that money back to us with interest. And we form 15 people into a bank, and, and they all guarantee each other's loan, and our loan payback rate is 98%. Wow, any bank would be thrilled at that. And then we take that 100 bucks and we loan it out again to another person. And uh, over the 20 years we've been involved with this, we think we've helped about 65,000 women. Isn't that great? And, you know, we, we always say they have eight kids, but they have more. We don't want to say they have more than that because there might be a backlash against them for having too many kids. But, you know, so we say they have about eight kids. So eight kids, a, a mom and a dad, that's about 10, 65. That's almost three-quarters of a million people who are able to feed themselves and clothe themselves, send their kids to school and to health care clinics because a group of people cared enough to gather and give some of their money to people less fortunate in the world. Because we're all in the same world, aren't we? So Joey and I uh, get to travel a little bit, and, and uh, we were in India. Uh, and in India, you can't work because the power, you know, even if you're, you're trying to get on the Internet, the, the power goes out every 20 minutes, and, and so you start on an email. Or, and it, it, the only work I did in uh, three weeks in India was answer three emails. Yes, I'll come someplace. No, I won't go there. And one other email. And when I came home, I opened my Nikan check, 
and it was larger than the month before. And Joy said, we got to go away more often. <laughs> so I love the company. The products are absolutely outstanding. And I'm not going to tell you about the products in any great detail tonight. But um, when I was, uh, over the last two or three years, I've worked pretty hard. Uh, and I was doing a lot of presentations. And I can remember walking down the hall to the, uh, my back bedroom, uh, doing a wellness home with a couple. And I, and I kind of went, this is my third one of the day. And I said, have I been down here already? <laughs> and I realized I couldn't remember you know, uh, where I was in the presentation if I you know, got a little overwhelmed with it. And so I said, how am I going to remember? And I thought, well, what do we teach? Well, we teach our products are about sleep, water, air, and nutrition. Wait a minute. I want to do something before we get to that. The thing that I loved about Niken was the different concept they had about health that I'd never seen before. They said, look, it looks like we're moving away from nature, and the farther away we get, the sicker we seem to get. How can we move back towards nature? And what is it about nature that makes us healthy anyway? And of course, Niken discovered three technologies. They discovered the energy of the earth, magnetism, the energy of the sun, far infrared, and the energy of the air, negative ions. So... Um, uh, those are the three technologies, and then they built them into a bunch of products. So I got thinking about the products. So I said, well, what, where do we work in? We work in sleep, water, air, nutrition. That spells swan, right? I can remember swan, right? And you can too, right? How do you spell swan? You guys can be rocket stars in this business. Right? That's all you need to know, swan. What if I told you that 85% of people in North America don't get a good night's sleep? Now, would that be a good product line to have if you were a company? Oh, what if I told you that 100% of people wanted to drink pure, clean water? Would that be? What if we had the best water filtration and treatment system in the world and we could prove it? I love that part. We could prove it to people, right? Because our stuff is independently tested. Uh, um, what if I said that the fourth highest cause of environmental cancer in North America is the air you breathe inside your home? Because everything, our paints, our insulation, our flooring, our furniture, our glues, all give off gases that we can't smell. Joy and I are fortunate enough to have uh, three wood-burning fire... We live in an old house, and we've got three wood-burning fireplaces, and we love those. But before I load wood into that, my Power 5 Pro goes off because it detects the unburned gases that have come out of that fireplace. I can't smell them, but they're going into my lungs. I have a choice. Either that thing can filter it or my lungs can filter it. Right? So that makes sense to you, doesn't it? What if I told you um, that the nutritional value of the food you eat is probably not as good as it was when your grandparents were around. Yeah. Right? Does that make sense? Everybody knows that, right? We all need uh, nutritional supplementation. What if I told you that NECANs were uh, pharmaceutical grade, which means they're 98% accurate in their labeling and contents, versus, did you know there's a law called the Good Manufacturing Practices Law? Yeah. And it's, do you know what, what, what level of accuracy they have to have? 17%. In other words, they only have to have 17% of what they say on the label actually in the product and it doesn't have to be in every tablet or pill. It just be, has to be in the batch that was made that day. The Good Manufacturing Practices Law, and it was written in 1934 when people were still stirring vats with wooden paddles. And in 1934, 17% was the highest level of accuracy you could reasonably expect to get. This is 2011. We can get 98% accuracy, right? That's called pharmaceutical grade, and we're the ones that have that. But our vitamins and minerals are different from anybody else's in that ours are from whole, or, our whole foods grown organically. Your body does not need more chemicals. Would you agree? It needs nutrition. What if I told you that this company... 
uh, had the joint formula that the U.S. Olympic team has been using for years. They're not using Celebrex and Viarx, right? They're using our product. What if I told you that we had a product that would prevent osteoporosis, and if you had it, it would regrow bone, and we could prove it to you? Would that be a good thing? What if we had a product that could take your immune system? You know, your immune system is important, right? It fights off everything. So your immune system works perfectly till about age 35, then it begins to go downhill. But I'm soon to be 65, and I have the same uh, level of immunity that I had when I was 18. And that's a blood test. You can test that. You can't fudge that research. Would that be a good product to have? What if I told you that our magnetic and far infrared products could decrease discomfort? Are we allowed to say the P word? I think we are, aren't we? Uh, it could decrease pain, could decrease inflammation, could increase circulation, and we could prove that with those thermographic studies with no side effects and no contraindications to their use. Would those be good products? That's what I explain to people. And I say, does that make sense to you? And they go, yeah, it really does. And I say, would you like to see these products? You know, I don't show them. Uh, uh, I don't take them down to my bedroom anymore. Can I use these things? Yeah. So what I do is I say, here's our sleep system. I say, do you sleep on a normal bed? And they usually say, yeah. And I go, does it have metal springs in it? And they go, yep. I say, well, those metal springs collect electricity. And you can measure that with an induction meter. I've got to tell you this story. I'm over at... Uh, a friend of mine's house one day, and he's a Nikon distributor, and we're doing a presentation to one other guy, and a third guy comes up to the door, and he doesn't know we're doing a presentation. He's just coming in to have coffee with his friend, and his friend works from home now. And he, so he comes in, and he's, he's wearing this kind of meter on his belt. And so I'm a curious fellow, and I said, what's that meter? And he looks at me, and he goes, it's an electrical pollution meter. So I know he's dumbing it down for me, right? I said, oh, Really? I said, show me how it works. So he takes it off his belt, and he clicks it on, and he holds it up to uh, a flare uh, an incandescent light, and it goes, and a little reading on the scale. And I went, oh, that's interesting. He said, that's nothing. And then he held it up to a fluorescent light, and it went, a little higher reading. He said, I said, oh, that's interesting. Fluorescent lighting is more polluting than incandescent lighting. He said, absolutely. He said, that's nothing. He said, come with me. He walks down to my friend's bedroom, he puts it down on his guest bed on the top of it, and it goes, and the little needle goes right off the end. I said, what's happening? He said, electrical, or, uh, metal springs in this bed are collecting the electro smog, the electrical pollution that's in this house, that's everywhere, and you're laying right on top of it. And that's not good for you. So what we do is we put this foam thing on top, rubber, latex rubber, and it has magnets in it. Magnets are very good for you. We've done a strength test on these people by that time. We put a pillow in there, and that's got magnets in there. And then we put you in there. And then what? And then we put the comforter so that you're cocooned in that magnetic energy uh, of the Earth, replacing and restoring the energy that you're supposed to have replaced and restored by living on the magnetic earth. But we don't live on the magnetic earth anymore, do we? 95% of the time we're indoors. This has got a cement basement with rebar in it, I bet, cement floor. Um, in m many people's houses, there's a, at least in Canada, there's a basement. So you're removed 12 feet from the earth already. And then some people go upstairs to go to bed. Um, and your house is just uh, surrounded by electricity, right? Nobody's going to give up their uh, fridges or their stoves or their computers or their big screen TVs, right? Guys? Okay? You don't give up your big screen TV, right? Did you know that the big screen TV is uh, genetically programmed on the Y chromosome? <laughs> so, apparently I have two or three Y chromosomes. <laughs> At any rate, um, when I draw that picture, they go, wow. And then I say, we call this our deep sleep. Our deep sleep 
uh, sleep system, and it pulls you down into that deeply restorative sleep um, that people haven't gotten for years. If 85% of people don't get a good night's sleep, and you've got two people in front of you, you've got almost a perfect chance of having at least one of them not get a good night's sleep, right? What happens if your partner snores? Now, I know women don't snore. Men snore. <laughs> women purr, men snore. <laughs> but what happens if, you're, if your partner is a disruptive snore, is a disruptive sleeper for whatever reason? Maybe they have, you know, hyperactive legs, right? Maybe they toss and turn a lot. Maybe they snore. Maybe they get up several times a night. What does that do to your sleep, right? And when you get a sleep system on a person, Who's the best person to tell you whether the sleeping has changed? Their partner, right? Because the, and it's usually a man. The man will say, oh, "It's not doing anything," right? And the woman will go, "Fred," <laughs> because it is helping and it is changing the sleeping. And when you get someone to sleep, it changes the life of the whole family, doesn't it? I don't actually ask individuals how they sleep. I say, "How does your family sleep?" Because even if there's a child in the house that doesn't sleep well, the mom doesn't sleep well, right? Okay. So then I take people out into the kitchen and I show them the water system. And um, I don't do much in the way of explanation anymore. I do... Do you guys use OTO in that little water test down here? I don't know... I, I don't know whether you guys know about this, but in Calgary, we'll take two glasses of water. And the first glass of water will have chlorine in it. And the second glass of the water will also have chlorine in it. We'll put them on the, on the table. And then I'll ask the person if they have lotion on their hands. And if they do, I have them wash their hands. Uh, because lotion is a barrier, right? And if they don't have it, so they wash their hands. And then I say, be my assistant here. And I give them uh, a little bottle of OTO. That's the stuff we use in pools, the drops we use to check for chlorine levels in pools. And then, so they put 10 drops in the one glass. And it turns yellow. looks like urine, right? And so um, I go, wow, do you want to drink that? And they go, no. And uh, I say, well, here, let, give me your hand. And I put their hand in the other glass, and I have them stir it around very gently because I don't want them to think they've, you know, um, uh, you know vaporized the, the chlorine that's in there. It's just to get their, their hand in contact with the water. And then I give them the dropper, and I say, put the same 10 drops of water, of OTO in that. And, of course, it stays perfectly clear because they've removed, in 10 seconds, 98% of the chlorine out of that glass. And they go, wow. And I tell them that when they shower and drink chlorinated water for the first 35 years of their life, there's an increased tendency to cancer of the colon of 44% and an increased tendency to cancer of the of the bladder by 66%, and that study's been done all over the world, and it's a really easy study to do. You just take people who are bathing and drinking chlorinated water and you come in the cities and you compare it to country mice, you know, who, who don't have any chlorine in their, in their well water that they're showering and drinking with. And in every country in the world, it's the same uh, percentages, okay? And, they, and so that's how I introduce the shower system to them. And then I show them two pictures do you guys have these, these pictures of the tomatoes and the... Right. right. I love those pictures. Except I can't find them. And this other one? So I say, the one on the left has been given a bath in our water, and the one on the right has been given a bath in city water. What's the largest organ in your body? Skin. Skin. I said, which one do you want to have in your bath water or your shower water? That's pretty easy, right? And then I pull this beautiful thing out. I've not met Chad Nelson. I hope to meet Chad, but that's a beautifully simple experiment. He took four yams, organic yams, put them in uh, tap water, reverse osmosis well water, and pie mag water. Which one do you want your brain feasting on? Your brain is 87% water. It's pretty important, isn't it? Yes. And you know that's all I say about water? And then I take them into my family room and I take a blanket most of us have a blanket on a couch or something you know and I take it over and I I just shake you know the little monitors on the left side as you're looking at it is on the left side of of your unit and so I just shake that by that air monitor and in about eight seconds whoosh, that thing has gone up to red 
And while they're uh, looking at that, I then take them over and I show them some of the medical research that's been done on negative ions and how helpful it is. And they go, wow. And then I hand them bottles of our nutritionals. And we don't talk much about it, a little bit. Um, but then here's something that you guys might not be aware of. There's a book out there called Medicinal Mushrooms. Have you ever heard of that book? Yeah, have you all heard of it? It's, it's called Medicinal Mushrooms, Ancient Remedies for Modern Ailments. And I found it in chapters uh, one day. I was browsing through the books that I thought you know, people would be reading. And I went, boy, a book on mushrooms. Boy, I hope we're in there. And I had to read to page 135 before I found what I was delighted to find. And I'm going to read it to you. The most sophisticated and advanced multi-mushroom formula, of which the authors are aware, is called Nikin Biodirected Immunity. The formula combines 14 different medicinal mushrooms, including the eight described in this book, because Nikin has six mushrooms that no one else in the world has access to. Right? The product is sold and distributed by Nikin, a worldwide distributor of health-related products. Isn't that great? Then I go to the back, and it gets even better. They list a producer's list of all the large companies that produce mushroom products. And here's what it says about Niken. Niken, a network marketing company, offers a unique 14 mushroom formula that includes several rare species and exclusive strains grown especially for Niken. Niken's formula is the Rolls Royce of multiple mushroom formulas. The global giant Niken is a leader and innovator in the highest quality wellness technology. And these guys have nothing to do with Niken. And I tell people that we get that kind of third party validation all the time. And then I read them the results and I show them the results of uh, Dr. Naidu's study on our bone health pack. And they just look at those graphs and they go, wow. And with them, I read the conclusion, and then I, and they go, their mouths are like this now. And you know, it doesn't matter whether they're housewives or engineers or university professors or doctors, it doesn't matter who they are. When you've talked about sleep, water, air, and nutrition, I, I finish up with this question. I say, can I ask you a question? I'm going to ask you a question. Can I? Does it make sense to you? that the quality of sleep that your body gets, the quality of water that you bring into your body, the quality of air that you bring into your lungs, and the quality of nutrition that you give to your individual cells has got to have something to do with how healthy your body is. Yes. I get yes or absolutely or uh, virtually 99% of the time, right? And the rest of the time, I get something else that's positive, too. I say, what interests you the most? Where would you like to start? If you can get everything, get everything. But if you can't, start somewhere. My goodness. Our health is our wealth. Right? Both, uh, both my wife and I have had some health challenges over the years, and, and we're well. We're well. Um, but... Um, I remember uh, we were walking around uh, in front of our house one day, and my wife said to me, she said, Jim, you know, we're wealthy. We're wealthy in terms of, of finances. We're wealthy in terms of the family that we have. We're wealthy in terms of the friends that we have. And we're wealthy in terms of the experiences that we can have in the world. And if we don't have our health, we've got nothing. Isn't that the truth? Hmm? So, I say to people, that's my presentation. And that presentation, even with all the extra stuff that I don't tell them about, um, has taken us 51 minutes since we started. And we took a few minutes with Dave. Usually we do it in around 40 minutes. And you know, I believe that people don't want to take a long time to do a presentation. I believe that's the first thing. They say they can't do it. When I first started out, I was given a lecture. <laughs> And I, I, I was trying to do it at a medical school level, and people were, 
people would they'd be sitting up at the beginning of that, and by the end, I, they'd be just sliding down like this. Yeah. And they'd go, Doc, that was great, really interesting. <laughs> but I can't do that, right? But everybody can spell swan, right? And you know, there's an even easier presentation coming out. It's called the vital presentation. Have you all heard of that? You know, what's vital in your life? You know, the first thing is air, the second thing's water, next thing's sleep, then nutrition, and then income. And what, what's poor levels of that look like? And what are good levels of that look like? What would it be, be like to have the kind of income that you wanted, for example? What would it be like to have the kind of air that you could breathe? Where do you go to breathe good mountain air? Do you live there? No, you don't. Where do you get your water from? Most of us get our water from the city, you know. Um, where do you get your, uh, your sleeping on a, a sleep system? And here's a question that I love to ask people. I say, when you wake, do you want to know how to ask people about sleep? At least how I do it? It's really simple. Just walk your way through it. You say, what time do you go to bed at night? And they go, whatever time they go to bed. And you say, how long does it take you to fall asleep? Because if it takes longer than five to ten minutes, that's normal. We know that from sleep studies. So if they say, gee, it takes me 40 minutes to go to sleep, they have a problem. What if they say, I'm a great sleeper. As soon as my head hits the pillow, I'm asleep. We go, you're exhausted. You're not getting a good restorative sleep at all. That's why you fall asleep when you're watching television, right? And they go, oh, I didn't know that. Oh, Wendy apparently falls asleep during television. <laughs> so, uh, so then I say, do you get up at night? And why do you get up at night? And most of us get up at night as we get older to go to the bathroom. And if your partner gets up, sometimes that disturbs you. And do you think uh, between, the time, <laughs> between the time you go to the bathroom and you come in, you've wake, woken up a little bit? Yeah. It's disrupted your deep level of sleep? And then I say, what time do you get up in the morning? And do you get up with your alarm or before your alarm? And then I asked this question, and I love this question. I, I got it from my grandchildren. I said, when you wake up in the morning, do you have all the energy you want to do the things you love to do? Isn't that a great question? Do you have all the energy you want to do the things you love to do? And almost everybody says, no, I like more energy. Right? I said, well, we have the answer for you. And people say, wow. And because it makes sense to them, they get started on their own. So I don't have to close anybody. They close themselves. Because when you've seen that and it's so logical, how can you not want to have those products for you and your family? Does that make sense? So network marketing, did anybody have a, a trouble with the fact that this was network marketing? I think I mentioned earlier, I, I didn't have any experience with network marketing, except when I was first a doctor and came to Calgary, someone invited me out to dinner. And at that time, my wife and I, I had a practice wife, uh, when my first, wife, my first wife and I were there, uh, we, we didn't have any friends because we'd come from Ontario. And when we came out, um, somebody asked us out for dinner. And I thought, great, we're going to have friends. And this guy's not a doctor, and I really like him. And it's important to have friends outside your profession of what you do. And we got there, and there were 19 other couples who'd been asked to that same dinner. And it was a, 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 an old network marketing company. And, and I was kind of disappointed in that. But, you know, we went on and we built a friend. We didn't join that company, but we went on and built that friendship with that couple at any rate. And, uh, and we loved them then, and we love them now. Um, but apart from that, I didn't have any bad experiences with network marketing. But some people... What is it Marty Jeffrey used to say? Uh, network marketing is just one step short of purse snatching. Right? <laughs> well, Marty would say that in a humorous way. And Marty was one of the funniest speakers ever. And I, I, I kept saying, Marty, don't say that. You know, there's a lot of people out here who haven't had any bad experience with network marketing. And, you know, you're, you're, you're maybe creating a problem that doesn't exist. So, at any rate, um, I, I love network marketing. I love the fact that you can, that you don't have any employees, that you don't have any expenses, that that uh, you can work with your friends. And who are the people that I, as I get older, I want playmates. The people that I want to live the longest are the people that I know in my exact environment, right? The people that I love and care about, my children, my family, and my friends. 
right? Why wouldn't I tell them about this stuff? Especially when it works. Mm -hmm. Especially when it makes sense to them. So I tell folks that every person who's ever had dinner around our dining room table, and that's a lot of people, have a complete wellness home. Now some of them do the business with me. Most of them don't. But some of them do the business with me. And uh, some of them are, are just uh, wholesale buyers, and that's just great because I want them to have the products whether or not they, they help me out. Mostly, uh, it's pretty hard to not tell your best friend, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, and that's what network marketing is to me. And I love the training that comes from uh, people. I, I don't have anyone in this room that works with me, and, uh, and of course, everybody works with Dave and Valerie, which is a great thing. Uh, but um, uh, we get people coming into Calgary all the time. This weekend, Dr. Naidu is there. And uh, I couldn't be there. Uh, uh, oh, no, it's next weekend. Dr. Naidu is going to be in there. So I made a little video uh, to be part of that presentation because um, my wife is uh, taking me away to a destination yet unknown to me <laughs> on Wednesday to celebrate my birthday, and I'm thrilled with that. So I love the training and support. I love the income. In my fifth month in the business, I made more money from Niken part-time than I made from my medical practice full-time, right? Now, I, I worked hard. You know, I saw, they, I saw that, that Reed Nelson tape that you should see 30 people. And so, boy, I didn't want to fail. I saw 33 people and 31 of them signed up with me because I have a lot of personal credibility, right, being a medical doctor. And people say it's an advantage. It is an advantage in some ways, and it's a pain in the neck in other ways. Uh, because um, I probably get asked more questions than most people work. One of my lead distributors, when people ask her, how does it work, she says, I don't know. It just does. And so it's, in fact, it's probably easier for her. So, but I do love the training and support. I love the income. I love the freedom. Um, I love the fact that Joy and I are taking a week off to just celebrate my birthday, and we, I think we're going to make it a, week, a, a birthday month instead of a birthday week. And, and yet... Uh, you know, I'm still going to have income and I'm still going to be able to do a little bit of work from wherever I am. Not this week, but uh, some weeks I can, I can work from anywhere I am in, uh, in, in the world, really. So what's not to like about this? We help a lot of people, we have a lot of fun, and we make a pretty decent income. Okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to take uh, about half an hour if you need it, and I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm open to any questions that you have. Um, uh, there's always that disclaimer that we don't you know, prevent, treat, or cure, or diagnose uh, anything as distributors in NECAN. But if you have questions about um, business or about um, uh, product questions or anything that uh, I think you think I might be able to help you with, I'd be delighted to do that. Sir, tell me your name. I am Ted. Okay, Ted. And uh, I am wondering, uh, with the significant uh, impact of the bone health products, mm -hmm. uh, uh, would it be wise for us if we have an acquaintance who is experiencing uh, issues like leukemia or things where, like the bone marrow is not developed the way it should, would that be uh, a wise thing to recommend for them to try? How old are they? Uh, 50s. Okay, so what's the okay? Great question, Ted. What's the first question that I want to ask about that? Is is it okay with that person's doctor if he takes a bone health product? And then if he takes a bone health product, I don't see any contraindication to that. But if his doctor says no, you know, I'm cautious about doing anything without checking with their uh, with their medical practitioners. Um, if they make the decision on their own, that's one thing. But if they need to ask their medical practitioner, I encourage them to do that. Um, you know, sometimes the medical practitioner will say no. Uh, don't do anything while I'm, I'm treating you with this because, you know, that's the way we're trained. Even if I don't agree with that, I never argue with that. But this bone health pack that we have is absolutely amazing. Um, I just did a video and answered some questions uh, that Dr. Naidu asked me to, to address from a medical point of view. And... Uh, and uh, I've learned so much about bone health, almost all of it, from Dr. Naidu. Um, so I'd be delighted to answer any questions on bone health if, if, if that comes up. 
Did that answer your question, yes. Ted? Yeah, so to always check with the doctor. You know, oh, there's one thing I want to tell you all about. You know on our, on our uh, products how it says don't use with pacemakers? Well, the deal is you can't fool with that. And I always let the person make their, their own uh, choice. But if, if it isn't within six inches of the pacemaker, then there's no problem. The, the pacemaker companies used to say, don't even use a cell phone. But of course, everybody went on and used their cell phone. And so they just they took that out. But, and so I will, I'll say every person has to make their own decision on what they want to do. And they can check with their doctors if, if, if they want to do that. But my wife has a pacemaker, and we sleep on a Nikin sleep system, and we sleep with, with a Nikin comforter. And she doesn't use a necklace, because that would be her pacemaker's up here. And so she doesn't wear a necklace, but she certainly wears mag steps in her shoes and a back flex in her back if she needs it uh, for some for some pain relief there. So, um, And the, the other uh, uh, caution on there is cannot be used in the first trimester of pregnancy. It, have you read that? Yeah. yeah. And that's because... Uh, since the 70s, it's been illegal to test anything on women in the first trimester of pregnancy. And so whether it's penicillin or whether it's magnets, they're going to have the same caution on there. Uh, safety in pregnancy is yet to be determined in the first trimester of pregnancy because you can't do any testing. All right. Having said that, um, I think my at least three or maybe four or five of my grandchildren have... have uh, uh, we're conceived on a magnetic mattress and, uh, you know, sleep frequently on magnetic mattresses. And so, uh, you know, I don't believe that there's a concern, but they still legally, because of the World Health Organization, uh, requirements have to put that on all products, whether they be our products or any other company's products. Other questions? Yes? I have a business. My name's Elaine Cobb. Hi, Elaine Cobb. transition to go from a hobbyist to a business model. Right. What was the one thing that you found to be the most impactful to your adjustment in your thinking? Um, it was upline support. And I don't know what it did, but once a week I talk, and I have talked for the last four years to Reed Nelson Wednesday morning for between a half an hour and 45 minutes. And, uh, you know, um, that contact with upline people um, just re-energizes re me. I get re-energized every time I talk to Reed. I get re-energized every time I talk to Dave. So um, have you ever felt uh, in this business that you wanted to quit? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, you, you remember Dave because you live here. And Dave says, get in, stay in, and don't quit. Well, I used to tell people there are two afternoons a month that I don't want to do this business anymore, ever, 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 ever. And I just wait and it passes. <laughs> because, you know, I can't think of any better way to spend my life than helping people with products that have no side effects and that have just untold upside. Right? This is the most significant. I've helped more people with these products. I helped a lot of people. Uh, in medicine. You know, I delivered 3,000 babies. I loved what I was doing. And I've helped more people in the last 11 years with NECAN than I ever did. And I helped them in a way that I couldn't possibly do any harm with them. Now, what can be better than that? Wow. What a way. What a way to live your life. So upline support was really important uh, for me to make that change. And I don't think I would have been able to do it without that upline support. And I can't really put my finger on what exactly it was because, you know, we all know the same stuff, don't we? We have to talk to people. I talked to somebody about follow-up earlier tonight. You know, we have to talk to people and then we have to follow up. They had to follow up with me. They had to follow up four times before I signed because that's, that's the process that I needed to go through. Now, some people will sign up after you talk. Some people sign up after you talk to them for 20 minutes, right? <laughs> And they may, or may, they may do that based on a personal friendship you have and credibility that you have with that other person, and that's great. And they may or may not do the business, because we don't know who's going to really take this business seriously and, and take it and run with it. But um, whatever the process is that they need is the process that they need. And, you know, I think it was worth it for the people to spend four visits with me. And I'm ever so grateful that they did. So follow-up. We all struggle with follow-up. But the more you do, 
the easier it gets for you. And the easier it gets for you, the better results you have. And the better results you have, the more money you make. And the more money you make, the more fun you have. Right? Yeah. Yep. And they took her, a doctor told her to get off of the false next Friday. And she has been taking the bone pad, and now she has upped it to the two osteodans, because she was just doing the minimum. Mm -hmm. um, but she has stomach problems with um, um, the acid and um, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. and, um, they, the doctor has it on two or three different things for her stomach. Mm -hmm. To get rid of the acid. Well, mm -hmm. uh, I understand you need some acid to absorb the calcium, so I was just wondering what you might suggest. Well, you don't need very much, and I think she'll be. She doesn't have to come off any of those medications, and. Um, uh, you want to be on two osteodents a day and two lactoferrin a day, and you want to take uh, so one osteodents and one lactoferrin at noon, and then you'll take one osteodents and one lactoferrin with your evening meal, and you can take one calcium in the morning and then take two calcium at bedtime um, uh, because calcium is better absorbed at night. Um, and if you've got um, a diagnosis of osteoporosis, um, I've had it for years. Sure, and it's it's going to take a little longer for you to respond because you've had it for years, and you know age affects almost everything, right? And so, uh, one of the groups that respond a little bit more slowly, the group that responds the quickest to treatment with uh, with with our bone health pack, are the are women in the menopausal group, you know, just around the late forties and early fifties, but. That, per that woman is going to respond better than someone who's in their 80s. Okay, so age does slow down the response. And there's a few other things that uh, slow down response. If people have chronic inflammatory diseases, especially in, of the bowel, you know, ulcerative colitis and, and Crohn's disease and, and, uh, and irritable bowel syndrome. Uh, smokers, people with COPD respond more slowly. Uh, and people with insomnia uh, or sleep apnea problems, they respond more slowly. See how nicely that fits in with us? Because when people start sleeping on our sleep system, we know that sleep is intimately associated with health of, of virtually everything, every aspect in your body. And it's also intimately associated with bone health because the lack of sleep is associated with higher blood pressures and renal dysfunction. Yeah. And I bought one for yeah. hundred dollars. Yeah. I sleep good. Yeah. But yeah. but I'm still if I don't get ten hours of sleep, I'm still tired in the morning. Yeah. Have you tried our mattress? No, but yeah. since I have the one with magnets, my daughter slept on and she said, Mom, when you die, I wipe your mattress. Yeah. Well, do you want to know if it works for you? That's great. But what I would encourage you to do is to, is to try sleeping on our mattress for four or five days and just see if you sleep uh, differently than on that mattress. So there are, one thing I know is that Nikan is a company that's um, scientifically reproducible. In, a, in other words, every magnet is the, is the strength that they say it is. And when they test it, lo and behold, they find it is. When they tested the other uh, 12 or 13 companies, um, there were, uh, they found, that, that make magnetic products, they found that some of those magnetic companies uh, overestimate the strength of their magnets by up to 5,000 times. And the only uh, company that was uh, reproducible in their scientific information time after time after time was Niken. Great, uh, great when we have that third party validation all the time. Okay. We got a text that people on the that are listening in mm -hmm. can't hear the questions. So maybe could you repeat? Sure, it? sure. Any other questions? Yes. My name is Rich Perry, and I have. Hi, Rich Perry. Have you worked with anyone with multi melanoma with the bone treatment? Um, 
No, I haven't. Um, so I can't comment on that. Yeah. Are there questions from? Yes, we have several questions from the internet audience. Uh, first, Rachel from Hawaii says this is great and mahalo. Thank you. <laughs> oh, the same to you, Rach. Uh, Liz uh, would like to ask, have you ever encountered someone with what some people call reverse polarity, and how do you approach it? Maybe repeat all of these, too. So they'll be able to hear you saying that question, correct? No, they won't. So the question was, have I ever encountered someone with reverse polarity? And I'm not certain what reverse polarity is. I had one person who was so sensitive to the effects of magnetism that um, if we put one toe on a, a, a mag step, she would feel ill. Now, probably I know a medical explanation for that. And that doesn't matter, because what I know is that that person is probably not a good candidate for magnetic therapy. And then there are other people who have talked about, uh, oh, I can make your watch stop. You know, I put a watch on and it stops instantly. And I can't explain that. There are people that I've heard of who, and who have, quote, reverse polarity, and this is how it was explained to me that you need to start with those people in a very gentle way and you may have to start with something uh, such as the uh, far infrared quilt with uh, the magnetics in it and they may be only able to sleep with that for uh, a couple of hours and then they may feel uncomfortable and they'll put that off and uh, then the next night they may be able to sleep with it for three hours and four hours and so we kind of wean them on these products and I don't know if any of you are old enough to remember electric trains, but when electric trains had that little switch that would uh, bring it to a slow stop and then it would go in the other direction. And that's um, how we have to deal with folks who tell us that they have that reverse polarity as well um, by weaning them on the product slowly because it takes a while for them to get used to it before their body begins to respond in a more normal fashion. Ken. Actually, we've run across another book there, so the microphone. Oh, okay. I'm happy to have someone else assist me here, Ken, so enlighten uh, in, us all. In the area of reverse polarity, we've run across a number of people that have it, and you, that's how you, how you can tell. They get weaker. They're, they get on the mag steps. They're weaker. Mm -hmm. They react to it. Uh, reverse polarity can be corrected in usually five to ten minutes. It's real simple to test for. It's real simple to fix. And uh, tell us how. Okay. Uh, can you do the demonstration? Sure. Okay. I just have you know. Put your right arm out. And put your your left hand like this against your forehead. Now. I'm going to test resist. One, two, three, resist. Okay, now reverse that hand. So it's like that. Like this? Like this. Like this? Okay. One, two, three, resist. See the difference? Yeah. Okay, with reverse polarity, there's no difference. It's the same both ways. The strength will be the same. If there is a difference, they do not have reverse polarity. If, they, if, there, is, if there is no difference, that means they have reverse polarity. That's how you test for it. Now to correct it, step forward a little bit, please. Super simple. Now remember, I don't have it, Ken. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to reverse the polarity. <laughs> you know. But my wife and I are leaving here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's real simple. You put your left hand on their right shoulder, your right hand on their left shoulder, and you just, just kind of relax and you know, stay like this for about five to ten minutes. And it's usually enough to correct the uh, reverse polarity. I pick up on energy pretty easy. I've actually, there's been times where I actually felt when it corrected. In fact, uh, last uh, fall at the Spokane County Fair, I, I, I was talking to a lady and she had a real problem. In fact, I tested her and she was weaker on the mag steps mm -hmm. uh, with the magnets. I don't think it was magnets, it was something else, but she was quite a bit weaker. So I, I tested her, she had reverse polarity. I did this, I literally could feel it when her polarity corrected itself. And I test her again, she was dramatically stronger on the magnets. Wow. And you can, it's, it's real easy to fix. Uh, there are other ways of correcting it. In fact, when I first saw it, it was a real, much more complicated. And there was another form, we were in Oregon doing a, uh, 
a wellness preview one time, and a lady said, don't get magnets close to me. She says, I really have a problem with them. And my wife just took her back in the other room, corrected her polarity. She came back, and wow, dude, was she getting results on the magnets. Now, see, this is, this is, this is called upline support, right? <laughs> yeah, thanks, Ken. Do, do you have to know everything in this business? No. no. There's always somebody who knows more, knows more than you do. And, you know, that problem is, is not going to be a problem that you run into very frequently. You know, most often you're not going to see that problem. Okay? Do you have other questions? You know, I don't want to comment on a, on a, on a medical question like that. And but First of all, I haven't heard of that, but I think we can't take questions on sp specific medical conditions. We can take, take symptoms, but we can't take uh, specific medical questions for, like that. And I'm happy for that person, aren't you? Yeah. Wow. Uh, Liz says, very interesting information on the pacemakers earlier. Mm -hmm. What about insulin pumps? Um, I don't know the answer to that. I think that everyone should check with their doc about that. Uh, my guess is that it will have an effect on the insulin pumps. And so be very careful and check with your, your uh, med get, get medical advice before you bring your magnets uh, uh, in contact with, uh, with that insulin pump. Absolutely. Get medical advice. Another question we have is, uh, what, if any, success have you experienced using Deacon products on patients with MS? So the question is, what experience have we had in working with people with MS? I think we've had absolutely tremendous results with people with MS. And, and I paused there because I, I heard just before we came in here about somebody uh, who had come into the Calgary area soliciting people for liberation therapy and uh, the, the treatment where they uh, unblock the, the drainage from the brain. Um, last year, when I first met Lillian Galley, uh, Lillian Galley was using a walker and when she wasn't using a walker, she was using two canes. And I can remember, I think we were going down to St. Louis together, and I think she, was, she and Michael were distributor of the year that year. And uh, last year, when uh, Joy and I were in Cancun, or the year before, uh, no, last year when we were in Cancun with Lillian, I said, Lillian, you dance everywhere. She said, Jim, it's because I can. And she started off with the mag steps, and she started off very slowly, and she didn't notice an effect very quickly at all. But then she noticed that she had a little more energy. And then she got the sleep system, and she got a little bit better. And then they brought the water out a couple of years later, and she got a little bit better. And then they brought the nutrition products out, and she got a little, little bit better. And um, then they brought the air unit out, and she got a little bit better. And... Um, I love Lillian's level of health. And we have another woman, I won't mention her name, uh, but she's from Edmonton, and she um, was going downhill, in her words, like a stone. And she got on all the Nikan products, and last year, uh, I think it was last year or perhaps the year before, she ran a half marathon. So if I were somebody with, with uh, MS, and I had the financial capability, I would get on all the products as quickly as I could. Um, we certainly know they have an effect on circulation, a positive effect on circulation, and our thermographic studies prove that. So if there is some validity, and there may well be, uh, I'm not an expert on the, the liberation treatments, um, that has to do with increased circulation, certainly we can say the same thing. And, and once again, our thermographic studies are proof that your eyes can see. But one of the things that we have to do, whether it be MS or any other medical condition, is to know there isn't one thing that's going to make us better. Because um, God didn't say, do you want to sleep or do you want to drink? 
or do you want to eat? Uh, or do you want to breathe? He said you have to do everything, right? And so it's a whole um, bunch of things that have to come together for us to be healthy, right? So I hope that answers that question. I would, I'm, I want every patient, I want every person that I know to, to know about these products if they have that condition. Anything else? So the question was, I take Bioflex pills. I don't know what Bioflex pills are. Um, will the Osteodense bone health products help me as well? What I know is that on March 16th, a year ago, um, I went in and had my left hip replaced. And um, I had been... When I, when I went into the surgeon, the surgeon said to me, my goodness, Jim, I've just seen your x-rays. You're bone on bone. How much pain are you in? And I said, well, it's a little bit embarrassing to even be here because I'm not in any discomfort at all. I take this stuff from Japan, and I was taking the, the joint formula and the bone health pack. And he said he was astonished because of the severity of my x-rays. And I had a, a bad limp. I, I, could still be, I could still ski because, you know, you're in a relatively stable position there. But when I was walking, my wife, would, and she'd say, stand up straight. And I'd say, honey, I am standing up straight. And I thought I was losing height in my vertebrae uh, just from getting older. And then when I, hip re when, uh, I got my hip replaced, um, I became three-quarter in three inches taller which is, was back to my normal height. And when I went back to my surgeon, uh, to the physiotherapy, physiotherapist, after um, two weeks, on my two-week checkup, I walked in, and they want you to walk in with crutches, so I walked in with crutches, and they said, uh, let's see you walk down the hall, and so I walked down the hall, and then they said, can you walk with one crutch? And I said, I can, and I walked down with just the one crutch. And then they kind of looked at me, and they said, can you walk down the hall with no crutches? I said, yes, I can. And she said, we don't want you doing that. <laughs> but she also said, how come you're so different from those other guys? Because the guys who had the same surgery that you had on the same day, they're all coming in like this. And you're walking normally after just two weeks. And it was because of the bone health pack and the CM and the magnetic pro it was because because of all the products, because I was using all of them. But I was specifically attributing it to those and that beautiful uh, power mag that we have and our sleep system. If you want to recover, no, and the water. And the water. You see what I just did? Right? So it wouldn't matter what people ask me, I'm going to come up with the wellness home, right? Because sleep, water, and nutrition are the basic components of health. Make sense? Yeah. A couple more. We have plenty. plenty. Well, we just have time for two more. Julia can see that there is uh, drinking water off the camera in the corner of the room. She'd like to know, is that the DK water system? It is. Oh, the, Julia asked if this uh, was a Nikan water system. And in fact, it is a Nikan water system. It's the aquapore. Yes. And Chris from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, is asking, could you please address the wellness home concept versus the Band-Aid method of products? Well, <laughs> so the question was, uh, can you discuss the wellness home uh, concept versus the Band-Aid uh, uh, concept of, of the treatment of whatever your problem is? Um, Band-Aids work for some things, uh, but not very often. Uh, um, uh, your body is a complex mechanism, and your, your body... I love what Noreen Naidu says about your body. Your body has all the doctors that it needs to solve all of its problems if you put that, your body into the right environment to be healthy. That's right. 
But your body every day gets thousands of what he calls illegal immigrants that come, <laughs> that, that come into your body. And he doesn't know that your body is able to deal with all of those. But if you remove those and give yourself, your body, uh, 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 an approach that covers as much as we possibly can, then that's going to be much better than any Band-Aid uh, solution ever. We really must get over this idea that one thing will help us completely. Even with the Bone Health Pack, we want people to change their diets. We want them to eat less meat. We want them to get more of their calcium from natural sources, not necessarily milk, because there's some question as to whether dairy calcium actually gets absorbed. Um, but we want you to get your calcium from green leafy vegetables and legumes, you know, peas, bees, beans, and, and lentils. And uh, so it turns out what, what your grandmother said to you all those years ago, and probably your mother's, eat your vegetables is a good thing to do. And we want people to not be couch potatoes. Notice I looked at you guys. <laughs> so we, we want you not to be couch potatoes. said, good morning, Dr. Johnson, whatever his name was. And the pediatrician was just awestruck by this and is now having her talk to other uh, patients of him, his with that condition. So I can't think of anything. Well, here's what I can say. There's no condition where any of this stuff will harm anybody, and the evidence is that it will help virtually everything. If you want to be healthier, get a wellness home. Okay? So we're over our time now. Uh, thank you for being a great audience. It's great to be here in Spokane. I really did come for you people, not for Elton John. <laughs> But don't call us tomorrow night. <laughs> Thanks very much, people. said, good morning, Dr. Johnson, whatever his name was. And the pediatrician was just awestruck by this and is now having her talk to other uh, patients of him, his with that condition. So I can't think of anything. Well, here's what I can say. There's no condition where any of this stuff will harm anybody. And the evidence is that it will help virtually everything. If you want to... Be healthier, get a wellness home.
Okay. So we're over our time now. Uh, thank you for being a great audience. It's great to be here in Spokane. I really did come for you people, not for Elton John. <laughs> But don't call us tomorrow night. <laughs> Thanks very much, people.